All right, all right. Hello, hello. Welcome everyone back to a special brunch edition with coffee in hand. Happy hour show this week, wrapping up the year with my man Jenkins. How you doing, man? Good morning, Cabana. Thanks for having me. This is uh, my first time streaming in quite a while, and I'm honored to spend the last stream of the year with you. Well, I am honored likewise with you because I, I guess with Chartist, you know, tell me if I'm wrong, but we, we do like to wrap up weeks and months and years because, you know, the, the next candle is just around the corner. And we finally have pretty much a full, I mean, aside from today's data, which is, I guess we have a few more hours, 10 hours left in it, but we have a full data set for the year. And I figured what better time to get you on here and run us through, I guess, some of the charts across all markets, really, because all markets, you know, even traditional markets affect crypto. And we'll we'll start with some of those and we'll work our way through some crypto and then we'll get to the, the really good stuff, which is uh, what we could possibly see if we get a pulse chain launch if we get pulse x i say when this year i think by like may maybe uh oh um, not that <laughs> and then uh we'll finish with uh hex so you know uh, this is you know we the biggest coins that uh, i support and we support on this channel are uh rh ecosystem coins and we want to say the best for last there but let's uh i guess where you want to start so we can start with uh traditional markets ish because these have an effect on uh you know what will happen ultimately in crypto land i mean they they kind of go you know as much as crypto the crypto world wants to say they're not related or we're decoupling or whatever they they pretty much have still gone in lockstep uh, especially like a nasdaq or something like that more so but um you know what do you want to look at first yeah i'll say um probably the first one i'd like to look at um is this like the overall stock market? So like the Dow Jones, but specifically, I like to use the US 30, which is like the top 30 stocks from the Dow Jones. It gives me like a good representation of what the market's kind of health is, no matter if it's being like super manipulated or not, you know. Um, and that kind of gives me somewhat of an indication of what we potentially can forecast when it comes to crypto and other assets. So I'd probably start there. Um, I'll wait to share my screen, don't I? Yeah, it'd be cool. <laughs> I mean, we could just imagine. Yeah. yeah. Okay, here we go. Uh, share screen. And we're trying to run through these in about an hour. Thanks to everybody in chat. Good morning or good afternoon, good evening, good night, Australia, uh, wherever, whenever you may be. Mango Junkie, I see in here. Kool Aid, yes, I'm up on your time. Uh, Happy New Year. Kool Aid. Year's free speech. Red Squirrel, what's going on? What's going on? Tin Top. Crypto Luck Box, J Mills, Bird Dog. Yes, pleasant surprise. Thanks. Uh, another pleasant surprise was seeing Pep again last night. So go check out Pep's stream after this one. Uh, it was pretty cool to see him back. Hex Bear, what's going on? Um, January full moon going to be the bottom. I don't think we'll get that lucky, but you never know. We've got some Jenkins fans in here. And before we get started, Crypto Luck Box, glad to see you guys. TA on Zen and thoughts on Zen FTs. Thanks in advance. Lucky for you, Luck Box. Zen is on the list. So <laughs> <laughs> we will get that. And I do not hate Dixon Cider. Good morning. All right, here we go. Let's go. What do we got here? Okay, well... Um... I guess to just get a general start, um, this is the US 30, like I said, the Dow Jones kind of representation. This is a, a, a chart that goes over the past like 10 plus years. So don't mind my drawings. I mean, this little dip I have measured, I just always leave that on there. That's the 08 um, housing market crash. Dip. Oh, yeah. Um, this one right here, the COVID dip. Um, that we had in 2020. I always leave those there just because whenever I'm measuring potential, like, you know, pandemic type events or black swan type events to show people like hey even if like the worst case scenario ever happens and you get a market crash so to say like you really zoom out and it's not that big of a deal and i'll show you that too when it comes to crypto um but anyways so i mean yeah like obviously the stock market has been going up and to the right since like you know like a hundred plus years now i don't know why this isn't loading right now but um let me reset this real quick 
Yeah, so as the of late, the beginning of time, Brontosaurus on Trading View back there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Trading View is kind of late to the to the party when it comes to this chart, at least. But ever since the pandemic of 2020, obviously the part uh, the the chart had that super V recovery that our president used to talk about. You know, that smashed all time highs around like the thirty six thousand dollar mark. Um, but that was like late December. And then all of 2021, it kind of spent in somewhat of a downtrend. And Cabana, I don't know if you remember like when I was like Chad Jenkins for a while at the beginning of the year, you know, yep. doing my thing. I used to do streams every single day and I would do the stock market before I'd go into crypto markets. So um, analyzing this chart, it kind of had good structure for like a nice pullback as it shows. Um, but earlier this year, around like summertime, middle of June, we finally had, you know, structure from the COVID pre-COVID top um, retested. So we had that, it was an all time high before COVID hit. And then we had that obviously big dip. And then we finally broke and retested that previous all time high after COVID kind of ended later into, at, around the election time, actually. Anyways, price kind of did its thing for the next couple of years. And then summertime this year, we actually got back down to this level and we saw price push off of that support line. So the chart showed us that we had some support, although everything the macro economic and uh, sentiment was bearish and it still is till today, but um, the stock market is showing some support whatsoever um, off of the old all time highs from pre COVID. But it's also, it was after the middle of summer, it's still honoring this kind of downtrend that we've had throughout the year. Um, but then, you know, time goes on late August into like September, we had a push and around September, October, I was kind of worried for a second, like, okay, like this might be the break where we see another massive dip that we can compare to, you know, the 08 dip or the 2020 dip. But then somehow, some way the markets, you know, found a way to recover, get back above the support line. And then now what we're seeing currently for the stock market, at least, and I'll show the SPX and NASDAQ, they're not the same as this, but if this has given us any bit of an indication on what maybe the other markets might hopefully try to show us, this is this could be a good sign, but we still have to wait and see because we're finally seeing for the first time this year the market actually broke above this kind of downward channel. And we're seeing a little bit of a retest now. You see it got above this line. Um, now we're seeing it kind of try and flip it to a support line. So if that's the case, I mean, just looking at it from nothing but a technical standpoint – that could be a bullish structure. But like I said, there's so many things going on in the world that everyone's well aware of that there's not really a reason to be bullish. But technically speaking, the chart is in the midst of showing us some type of hope for the stock market, at least. Yeah, I'm very skeptical of that. Yeah. But um, it is funny, like you showed the, the retesting of the pre-COVID highs and a lot of charts look like that or especially you know in some tech names we have yet to get um back all the way there and i think a lot of people are kind of you know subconsciously i guess you know waiting on that or perhaps consciously some and uh yeah, yeah. you know waiting till we get that touch and be like okay now we kind of gave up you know gave up all the inflation money printer uh two years of charts and we can get back to normal and resume business. And if we're waiting for that, then we probably have, I guess, a few months to go in a lot of those charts. I, I think some things have, you know, bottomed in traditional markets. I think Ethereum may have bottomed, but we'll see. A lot of people don't think that. But yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what else we got here is NASDAQ. Yeah. So like the, for NASDAQ and SPX, so the thing I want to point out for like the stock market, the reason why I like US 30s, because you see how we had the downward channel all of 2020 or 2022. Um, and now we're kind of breaking above the downward channel and retesting it. SPX and NASDAQ are kind of the same, so I'll show them separately. But what we're seeing right now, I feel like these are kind of like lagging spans, or so, like for lack of a better term. So um, if you see the support line from 2020, um, middle of July, this is the COVID dip, by the way, not as severe on this chart, but still a big, pretty big dip. Um, but we do have the support line from like the summer of 2020, where you know price kind of made an all time high, broke, retested twice, and then just took off. And then you know, towards the end of 2021 into 2022, we had the same downward channel that we saw for the US 30 market, right? Um, mm -hmm. What we're seeing, though, is kind of the same thing. And this doesn't guarantee that it's going to follow the price of the US 30 market. But um, like we found the support kind of tapped it twice. Then we pushed ourselves above this downward channel top line. Um, you see a NASDAQ right now. We're kind of in the 
the situation of bouncing off the support line. So US 30 gave us two bounces, one and then two. Who's to say that this is going to bounce a second time? But that's one difference that stands out and it kind of leaves me torn because it's like the, the stock market looks so good, but like, you know, NASDAQ and SPX aren't necessarily showing the same type of bullish structure. It's all the same type of chart. It's just one out of the three is actually above this trend line while these two are still sitting at there's a nice support. And I think tech is like the problem right now, as long as the Fed continues to raise rates or or be stingy with it, because those are the high growth names. Those are that's the land where, you know, they need money for growth and you have a lot of companies not making money. And these are the companies that are you know affected the most. And yeah, it's just uh, a, a tougher sledding in tech land yeah and i would agree with you too because if you look at the nasdaq the tech market it's basically sitting at the support line but it's not really showing a strength right now who knows what will happen you know next year obviously it's all just a guess at this point and by the way like i know you know but i'm sure a lot of people know but like technical analysis the way that i do it at least i do it just to analyze the market look at both perspectives like oh what can go right what can go wrong on the upside to the downside it's not i'm not really here to make um, like price guesses or tell people, hey, market's going here or there. A lot of times when I do these videos, people like take my word and expect it to be like, oh, it's a price call. It's not. I'm just like, you know, like any decision anybody makes in life, you would hope that you look at what can go right and what can go wrong before you make a decision. Exactly. All I'm trying to do is just give a perspective on, okay, upside structure, downside structure. That's literally, I'm not here to be like a price call guy or anything or recommend yeah. trade. But and there are a lot of those out there. And I, I guess that's the you know, want to be a hero kind of thing to do is like, oh, I'm calling the bottom here or whatever. I, I just want to, you know, benefit, grow my stack and, you know, add more where strategically possible and where it makes sense, where history possibly shows some guides, put some buys in there. And, you know, when can we finally, you know, get back into an uptrend? Those, those are the more, most important things to me. I'm not, you know, trying to, you know, time an exact bottom or anything like that. So we, we share the same mindset yeah uh, yeah sure and i will say for the tech industry like the nasdaq um because it's not showing the same bullish structure if this does decide to break under the support line i mean i'm looking right at the top of that 2020 there you go period. that's what i'm talking about yep so the same way right if we go to us 30 we already bounced off the, the pre-2020 covid dip right that already happened so maybe nasdaq needs to kind of fill that same area the chart's not going to look the same I think maybe it needs to, yeah, maybe it needs to at least give us a little bit of downside. I just don't feel safe or comfortable saying everything's going to start going up just yet, you know? Yeah. Um, but like I said, either way, the structure is still there. It's just not really filled yet. So that's kind of, and then I obviously go to F, the SPX, kind of the same exact thing. We haven't really filled that pre-COVID um, support line just yet. So there is some downside um, potential there, just the stock market itself is showing us it's showing us and this one's the most manipulated in my opinion right because <laughs> the government's kind of doing what they want to do with all this but yeah spx and nasdaq kind of show us like the true strength of the economy in my opinion and yeah i could definitely see some downside but we i would expect some sort of like relief rally too because you got to consider especially for crypto and i'll talk about that once we get to crypto but um, like the tax harvesting that's going on right now. We're in a bear market. People are taking their losses to basically, you know, pay less on taxes. Yep. <laughs> We're no tax advisors or anything, but that's a real thing. So Did right some of that uh, the past couple of days, actually, just sell some of the losers that I have no interest in getting back in for a while and yeah, take the loss. Yeah. Oh, I did that literally last night. I'm like, you know, it's actually, I'm actually thankful for this bear market because I was not looking forward to tax time, but yeah. <laughs> so it's a good, and I'm, I'm talking traditional names. I'm investing into crypto um, kind of, you know, I paired some of my losses in, you know, some traditional names, but I'd rather be scaling into crypto than, than selling it right now. So. It's a real thing though. I mean, even for stuff like hex, even if people don't admit it, like if you're down 90% on the year for a hex and you bought earlier this year and you need to take a loss January or December 31st and you buy back in January 1st, I mean, it's a thing and it's, it's not a, like I said, this is not financial advice. I'm not a tax advisor, but it's not a bad idea. I mean, it's, it's kind of smart for some of the, the people who've been in this game for a while. It's, it's a real strategy and the markets reflect that. Yep. Absolutely. We have uh, some individual names here before we move on. Yeah. Maybe like, uh, I think 
good ones to look at might be Apple, Amazon, Google really quick. And then we have a lot to get to. Yeah. yeah. But, see, I, the, I wanted you to pull these up just because I think a lot of these look similar in the fact that we're kind of getting to new lows on the year. We kind of, you know, we're kind of like breaking. Actually, Meta's that, that had a nice bounce back. But uh, Amazon, I think Apple, Google, we're kind of just kind of rolling over or in danger of. And, you know, that to me looks like we have a little bit further to go to the downside. And that would also go with uh, what you're showing us there on the NASDAQ, because if we're to get back to that, say, what, mid uh, 9000 level, um, Apple's going to have to to break down to get us there. And it, it's held up pretty much all year. And finally, that one's starting to break. I think, you know, maybe after the beginning of the year, once we maybe get, you know, some iPhone numbers cut yeah, um, yeah yeah that will be the the final uh signal i guess to for us to finally get wash out apple and i think we wash out apple there's not much else to wash out uh my first target is uh 115 on that i hope we don't get to that 80 level that you're showing there yeah, but... I was about to say, cause apple apple's kind of scary in that sense i don't see apple going this low but just to kind of yeah. compare apples to app that's funny no pun intended compare apples <laughs> to apple. <laughs> um the covid dips down here at 81 dollars roughly i don't know if we're going that low on apple that'd be kind of unfortunate something bad to have to happen but the yeah. good thing about apple is it's starting to fill all this previous structure here yes. so anywhere in, you can go basically as low as 107 and all the way just up to like 130 right now and be like hey the bottom could be close to being in but yeah like you said we're kind of swimming in that territory where there definitely could be some downside um, I just don't know if we're going to touch 2020 pre-COVID levels when it comes to things like Apple. It's just so far away. Yeah, Something like Amazon. 115, I think, is my bid area. But yeah, it just it just looks kind of nasty right now. It's just rolling over a bit. And I, yeah, 115 solid, too. You got some taps here. You already got some to, um, confirmed support down in that 115 area, so that's not bad, which was resistance at one point for a little bit at least um something like amazon though like it's it, you can see amazon's also starting to fill up you know yep structure but the thing about amazon is different from apple um the covid dip's already been filled and it's already broken under but you can see if you kind of stretch that along the covid dip definitely held this support for a long time had a huge pump and obviously we had typical technical analysis the previous support line boom 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 turned into a resistance line and then yep. really i'd love to get some uh under 80 that's where I have a bid in for some Amazon. I can, yeah, I can see. Like I said, if you're going to get the, the, if NASDAQ is really going to make its way down, what is that percentage that we can, and this isn't like, this is a realistic type of uh, dip I could see for NASDAQ, another almost 12%. That's quite significant. Um, and I don't know if you remember, I mean, you, I know you do, but the time when NASDAQ and Bitcoin are like the same price for the longest time yeah. ever. Yeah. Um, the funny thing about NASDAQ is if you go back to the 2020 pre-COVID top, um, we're at about 9,600. And ironically, that's like where Bitcoin, don't mind all these drawings, but that's where Bitcoin has that uh, that, uh, that CME gap um, around 9,600. I probably won't find it right now, but where are we at? The gap that we wanted filled like way long ago, roughly in this range right here, mm -hmm. Um SPX has that same kind of support level when it comes for like actual dollar amount, but yeah, one of my favorite SPX charts. I use it often on the happy hour. The it loves to follow the 200 week, and we dip below it, I guess, uh, in October. So that's that you know low of broken support right there, and then you know we we bounce back from it, and you know does that continue to hold? I mean, you can go all the way back to I think uh, probably 10, 12 maybe more years, 2008. Um, I think pretty much, I guess, 10 years that that whole channel has been intact. Yeah, there oh, we wow. go. Yeah, it's so, definitely, I mean, it's a good, uh, it's a real good support line right now. Yeah, so we, we, we can dip below it. Obviously, we've we've touched it and dip right below it and bounce right back before. I, I, I get really excited on the buy side if we can do that again, um, just because I think so much bad news has been priced in. But with the Fed against you, uh, I think, you know, we, we might get some more opportunities on alongside and uh, not just in traditional markets. Crypto is going to be pretty exciting, too, if we can get some cheaper prices there. I'm, I'm cool yeah. with, uh, you know, not going any lower on 
on hex but uh, you know if we get to a penny and a half uh you know i'll get excited about that too but we can get that we'll get there when we get there um yeah, I mean, real quick, NASDAQ is showing to kind of confirm a little bit more bearish sentiment. Unfortunately, it is under the 200-week moving average, and it looks like it's kind of turned it into a resistance line almost, which is like, have we seen that before? Oh, we have. Uh, it broke under, oh, oh wait, that dip. Um, but it really hasn't spent much time underneath it, but right now, yeah, it's like underneath the 200-week uh, moving average. So yeah, this is the NAS specifically, yeah. Yes, yeah, and but like the SPX is above it, and US 30 is above it, so NASDAQ specifically, like tech, is just kind of doomed to kind of back up that that fundamental sentiment's kind of backed up from a technical standpoint. The, the bearishness, hey, big pep, good morning, man. Great to see you back last night. I uh, listened to the first part of the stream, haven't got through all of it, but yeah, good points. Most analysts are expecting a 10% decline in the SP when uh, then we start to recover. Yep, so I, I'm, I'm thinking maybe bottom uh may or excuse me march um just because I, I said on the last half hour last i think three or four meaningful bottoms have all occurred in march yeah coincidence okay but at the same time that could very well align with the the fed easing up a bit um i i've also said i think inflation has done well peaked for a while uh, we're we're going to be under five percent you know if not later january uh by february i guess february we would get the confirmation of that so um i think this potentially has the uh, the makings of a, a better year but we'll see we haven't had two down years in a row i think since 2008 so yeah, I, it, i'd like to not do that again but we'll see it, it can't get they can't get much worse at this point usually it's like yeah you'll get that severe you get that volatile drop bear market bad year and then the next year is usually like okay sideways a little bit up a little bit down then you start to get that that momentum you know but i don't i don't foresee any market going down as bad as it did all 2022 unless like the world just totally changed whenever you know you got those those people that are new around here like oh this time is different it's like well one of these days they might be right but i just don't see it happening anytime soon yeah yeah uh what else we have did we take a peek at google i think google probably looks a bit like um amazon and apple i would guess um just from memory but yeah, maybe a little bit. I mean, it's kind of got like a T. Oh, wait, no, we're still at the. Oh no, wait. Let me pull up my Google. Um, Google. The Nasdaq version. So Google, kind of. Yeah, this one's actually retested. So yeah, it seems like all these tech companies are all confirming that 200 moving average as like a resistance line for like the first time ever, which is kind of interesting. And of course, like you can't really treat like these businesses from just a technical standpoint, but this does say a lot. I mean, there's a lot of, you can paint a picture, a vivid picture um, with the, with the, the indicators and the moving averages and just the simple, you know, look at the, the impulse correction, impulse correction. That's markets one oh one. how waves work. One, two, three, four, maybe a fifth wave down to the pre 20, uh, the pre COVID dip. Like that's kind and of, they not have a bid there. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. Um, I mean, but the structure, I mean, yeah, I, I can definitely see a downside for all these tech companies and NASDAQ. I mean, if, now that we're looking at multiple charts and kind of comparing and contrasting, they all kind of show us the same thing. Yep. Um, but like I said, that's just opportunity at that point. This isn't one of those like, oh, we're talking meme coins and these things can die going that low. These are all like legitimate companies and we know the world's going to eventually fix itself. So, um but yeah, looking at Google, I mean, the only one that looks really bad, to be honest with you, is just Meta. I mean, and it doesn't look bad from the point of like structure. I mean, I get, it kind of does actually. Meta looks really bad. It, it's broken yeah. a lot of structures from like it, this is we're at lows that we haven't seen since 2016. Um, well, I like that one just because on a earnings basis, it's cheaper than all the others, and it's had its giant puke. I feel. Yeah, I, I, I think we can get a, a big puke out of some of these others um so i actually i was i bought some in the 90s there motley made fun of me but i, I still did it that's not a bad buy i know a couple guys that were putting in like 40 50 grand around 140 dollars. i was like man that's just like a falling knife you're trying to catch there's no structure there at all and then they watched it go down under 100 and you know yeah. they were kind of freaking out and these guys also sacrificed for pulse chain so it was a rough year for these guys but 
Yeah, I'm, 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 by. Uh, yeah, going back to what we were talking about earlier, I I don't you know like trying to call a bottom, but if you're DCAing and something pukes that hard, then you know you want to put some more on. There's nothing wrong with that as long as you're not going all in at one point because then you're out of ammo if it keeps you know puking up. So yeah, absolutely, and yeah, I mean this thing is you can't get rugged by meta, you know. I mean <laughs> thing, so. Um, that's a safe play let's see we have a lot of crypto to get to but um last on our traditional list was tesla and uh we've had some requests for that also in the chat so that that is the last one i had on the list for us to get to let's scare some people this one has been all over the news unless you've you know been under a rock or whatever but <laughs> uh yeah it got down to i think 108 and uh you know, it's it's bounced back. I think we kind of gapped down from the 122 area earlier this week, and we kind of filled that. Yeah, we're a little bit of a bounce, a little bit of a but bounce currently. There are some very bearish targets, and this is kind of where I thought we would get a bounce because I was seeing like the 80 level, the 60 level being used as um, you know want to be buy points for for some people. I'm like, man, this is kind of like people calling for a thousand dollar bitcoin back when we were having that huge dip i guess yeah. below four thousand in like 2017 or whenever it was 2018 and i was like once you get people like you know i'm waiting for this and i'm waiting for you know way down here then it's like all right all right you know that's it gets to be a little bit of wishful thinking could we get there absolutely do i have a bid in in the 80s absolutely i do um i don't think we get there but i'll take it if we do yeah uh, what's uh, this, what do we look like here you can't yeah, you're right you can't get too too greedy when it comes to that. It's just like a bull market everyone's looking up 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 and then it just stops going up in a bear market everyone's gonna keep looking down 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 that just stops you know like at the end of the day there's real money and there's real market movers that are gonna have their positions filled once they feel like the price is cheap enough you know and there's people taking out loans at you know four hundred dollars for tesla yeah. but those same people are scared to buy at 120 bucks you know so Michael um, Saylor. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, and he probably <laughs> is. He probably is one of the only guys that's um, in that position. But just for reference to compare every single chart, here's the pre-COVID 2020 dip all around the $60 range you're talking about. There is structure there. Um, but there is also nice structure. I want to... It's, it's just tougher things like Tesla and stuff to go that low. I mean, yeah. like you said, it's and they of, have earnings and they're, yeah. they're going to grow them, you know, over the years. I mean, maybe they're, you know, having a little shortfall right now. I, I know some or a lot of owners were, I guess, uh, offered to take delivery for $7,500 off. I think model S's or something right at the beginning of the year that spooked a lot of investors because it's like, Oh my gosh, they have an inventory problem now since, you know, they, they were, uh, or over inventory yeah um, and they were worried about that so i think that's priced in finally um you know the company's gonna make money it, it, elon wants wants this more to be you know to be more than a, a car company a lot of people you know want to see it as just a car company and price it that way um i think there's a lot more going on there and a lot more revenue streams in the next five years so uh, I, for, like for the risk reward here I, I i like it and if it goes lower i'll really like it yeah and i i do too and also with tesla and this could just be my i guess perspective but i feel like a lot of like the younger crypto generation that doesn't do traditional stocks they mess with they like tesla a lot for whatever reason i feel like it's it's in tune it with feels like a crypto <laughs> yeah, yeah especially this this dip but the thing about tesla too like We've had good structure on the way up, on the way down, good structure. But I feel like this is one of those, you're getting your capitulation like right now. And this is a long capitulation. I mean, this is September all the way till now. So it's at three, four months. So I feel like it's we're finally getting that capitulation. And once you get that capitulation, you're kind of, it'll, you know, it'll drop hard. Then it'll kind of stay sideways. And then it just doesn't really drop too much harder after that. But if I had to take a wild guess... I wouldn't bank on touching the pre-COVID dip at 60, but yeah. maybe, you know, maybe somewhere in the 90s range. But then again, we touched, what, 109 already, it looks like. So it's one of those where if no, it's never financial advice coming out of my mouth, I'm not a financial advisor. But yeah, the dollar cost averaging into, you know, assets like these, uh, you, you really can't complain about these prices being that, I mean, you're talking... the 
it, it's really tough to get like a three, four X out of a stock and Tesla kind of gives you those type of setups, which is kind of crazy, you know? So um, you, you can't, you can't get too, too greedy in these situations and you can't blow your whole load at one buying point. <laughs> Correct. All right. Well, we're kind of on target, man. So halfway through the hour slash show and we've got our uh, traditional finance out of the way. Let's turn to the fun stuff, which is uh, stuff. crypto and why everybody is here. We're going to obviously save the best hex and pro- pulse chain talk and whatnot for last. But let's let's start off. Looks like you got some Bitcoin here. Yeah, I got some Bitcoin. So Bitcoin's obviously like our stock market of crypto. Everything's kind of following and going with that, whatever Bitcoin's doing. But um, one thing about Bitcoin, um, with the 200 moving average, it doesn't spend much time under there, but it's been there for a while now. So obviously bearish conditions, like anything else, you you can't get too greedy in the way down. But of course, the structure's showing us like there's, there's not really a stop in sight. So Bitcoin's at sixteen six right now. Um, our our January of twenty eighteen, that all time high that we had, that first pump um, before uh, the twenty seventeen, sorry, all time high before the twenty eighteen bear market. We you know bounced off that for a little while, had a nice little impulse correction, then we bounced again, and then obviously we finally broke that floor. We haven't even had the strength to go and retest those levels. Yep. Granted, we kind of touched the structure, the the microstructure from previous. So we have a bunch of taps here. We did get a nice wick there to confirm some resistance. So Bitcoin's not really showing us any sort of floor. If you look back in history, your next sort of floor is kind of around that 13.6 range. So, I mean, obviously everybody is watching the stream knows Richard Hart's position and the, the 11K and pray the 10K that he's been calling forever. That's definitely a realistic possibility. But just looking at technicals right now, I would say at least the next stop, if we do indeed confirm the structure and break these lows 13s, right here. I think is... Yeah. yeah. Mid-13s is like safe. And also, too, if you have so many people focused on 10K or 11K and pray, there's a good chance that they get in front ran. So you can't be like, oh, let me wait. Let me get a buy limit at 11,000 flat. You have to, you know, give yourself some cushion, you know? Yeah. Um, but the thing about Bitcoin too, and back when I was doing my daily Chad streams earlier this year, we had this um, ascending triangle pattern that I was telling everybody, uh, if we break above this, I'm sold on a bull market. But if this turns into like a breakout, we're going to the downside, I'll be completely sold on a bear market. And then that eventually happened. We broke to the upside, got faked out, and then it just t- totally melted in the moment. Um, I can zoom in real quick onto the day chart, onto that triangle. It's look a little messy for a second, but on that triangle, it broke under. Then we confirmed it one, two times. And oh yeah, check it. that out. Yeah, so that showed me like, okay, we're kind of in our our resistance range. And then sure enough, price, the, you know, the buyers fought for a while, but then it was just it was inevitable at that point. Also, to um, the moving averages, obviously, it got underneath that, confirmed that as resistance, but. The reason why I'm bringing that up is because once I saw this confirmation and all the people that went, followed my streams know exactly my position, I was sold in a bear market the moment that happened. And that's when I started moving a lot of my crypto positions to stables. And, you know, obviously I didn't sell the top on everything, but that kind of left me in good shape for a while because, uh, yeah, everything else that was already down like 20, 30, maybe 40% of that time took another 80% dip on top of that. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, anyways... In terms of just current structure, um, if you're a trader, which obviously we don't want to be a trader, but if you're a trader, this is great structure if you're a seller, right? Um, And like I said, we don't really have much of a floor until you start flirting with the upper 13 range. So that's kind of where I'm looking at right now, unless something miraculous happens that just shoots us above this resistance level around 18, which I don't think we're going to see anytime soon. Kind of in no man's land until the 13s down there. But. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I'm not one to tell anybody to buy or not to buy, but like we're just kind of in a zone where you just got to sit on your hands if you're a Bitcoin person and kind of just wait, right? And if yeah. price goes up, like I say, it goes above 18, don't panic, buy that pump, wait for the 18 break and wait till we get this confirmation turned into like a support line again. That's where I would get back in and then, you know, but I don't, I just, it doesn't look like that's the chart wants to do that right now. Yeah. unfortunately well one that does look a little better than this is ethereum let's take a look at that one 
Yeah, Ethereum, yeah, so Ethereum's not as bad just to give people not kind as of, bad. <laughs> yeah. To give people kind of the same idea. So what I would point or pay attention to for Ethereum is um Bitcoin you see, right? The current kind of wedge it's at, it stayed in this little bit of a wedge and then it broke under with a volatile dip, right? Ethereum hasn't actually broke yet. We're in this little downward pennant bear flag, whatever you want to call it. Um, of course, you know, I like my triangles. We got the the descending top line, a little bit of an ascending bottom line. So you can almost take that top line all the way up, really. Yeah, you're actually right. It could go. It literally could, basically from all-time yeah. highs. But basically what we're seeing now, I will say, on from a technical standpoint, this does look – it's showing me bearishness. The reason being is um, obviously we're in this downward trend right now. It's kind of a, a bear pennant pattern, whatever you want to call it. But also, too – if you're looking at the 200-week moving average, it's just being tapped uh, resistance nonstop. And we got a real confirmation here. Last time it tapped it, we had a volatile drop. So if you're a trader and you're guessing, oh, which way is this thing going to go once it breaks? Because at least the thing about triangles, at, least the, at the very least, they tell us one thing, that once price breaks out of this tension point, it's going to explode one way or another. That's where you got to look for other confirmations to kind of get your you know, sentiment or analysis, whatever. And looking at something like the 200 moving average and seeing how volatile the drop was, kind of confirming as a resistance, I would guess like, okay, it probably wants to go down. Um, but then outside of that, that's where you look at previous structure to find some levels. Um, this wick tells me one thing, money's sitting right there. Doji candle here previously that matches it. Resistance line from 2018 that touches it. Massive wick there. There's a lot of bids and money sitting right there. If I extend that line, you're looking at 700 bucks. Am I saying it's going to go to 700 bucks? No, but on a macro scale, if you compare a I'd lot, I love of it if we did. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, <laughs> I mean yeah. not for all overall crypto because that means we have more pain ahead. But I yeah, mean, if you're if looking you're a to buyer, buy, you love it. yeah, exactly. Yeah, but like if you're stacking, if you're being realistic fundamentally and stuff, comparing to, okay, Bitcoin's really in no man's land, like you said, looking down. The tech industry is kind of looking down. Ethereum. What would what's the argument that Ethereum's gonna go up while everything else dips? You know, so it's kind of tough to make that argument. So if I'm looking for a structure just from a technical analysis standpoint, I'm I mean it's held in better than range. Bitcoin. Like it, know, Bitcoin's it made new lows, and you know we're it looks like we could break down from here and maybe test you know the the Ethereum the recent Ethereum lows, but it has fared better than Bitcoin. So. And the thing about ethereum and most altcoins like of course they're going to outperform bitcoin but they're not going to be decorrelated from it they're still going to follow it they're just going to not be as bad obviously the bear market all these altcoins like hex and stuff are dipping a lot more severe than bitcoin but a lot of people just forget the fact that the pump was also you know like tens of x is higher than the bitcoin pump before the dip so people that measure from the top down to say oh this coin's performing bad look at the pump before because you know it's it's one thing to get a 90 percent dip when you had a 50x pump but if you're getting a 70 percent dip when you had maybe a three to four x pump it, it's kind of not as good as people want to make it seem in a bear market so but it, yeah like i said i don't think you're going to really make the argument for anything to make it run up unless you're talking a brand new meme coin that drops that'll last you know two weeks um, but on, on the on the actual real solid products on the blockchain there's not really a reason to assume they're going to decorrelate from bitcoin miraculously anytime soon yep. speaking of uh other blockchain things we we have uh i guess a list of uh richard hart slash pulse chain ecosystem coins if we want to look through i know different people out there you know at the risk of offending you if we choose a certain coin but we're charting coins here so uh yeah, bear bear with us. And if you don't like something, it's okay. Feel free to make fun of it in the chat. But uh, one I do like uh, is Hedron. Can we take a look at that yeah. one next? And we have we have plenty more. We have I think if um, Jenkins has them, we're going to look for you, uh, Pulse Bitcoin ASIC fans. We're going to do some of that. We're going to do some yeah. Zen. Um, but yeah, let's do Hedron first here. So Hedron, now this is a weekly chart. Let me go to the daily because we don't have much data yet. So daily will give us a better idea. So we're now we're on the day chart. Every candle is one day. Um, I went live, I don't know, probably like a month. It was a while ago. I can't even tell you guys. But um, the thing about Hedron, um, when we almost made this double top for all-time highs, 
Um, we printed sort of this triangle, and I can make this triangle stretch, but at the time, we had this triangle pattern here, kind of a micro scale triangle. And like I told you, every triangle and every chart is the same. Tension builds up, price breaks out, right? <laughs> um, so I was telling people, like, you know, the first thing that I noticed, uh, where's my brush at? The first thing that I noticed being involved in meme coins all the time, whenever you get a top and you don't necessarily get a double top and then a next top that follows it stays low, you, you, at least in my experience, you never see lower highs turn into a triangle that turns into like an impulsive move. So um, last time I did a stream, I kind of made that a point. And I don't like to talk bearish about solid products that I actually invest in, right? But the, right. Doing my analysis. <laughs> oh, we gotta of, keep it real. Yeah, yeah, of course. So, um, not to be bearish about things, but I did. Pe I did give people that warning. Like, okay, I know it's not a meme coin, but any altcoin in crypto, whenever you see that type of you know pump to like almost an all-time high or just a normal local high, and you see lower high, lower high triangle, that means tension's building, and the buyers are just believing in the high price right now. Blah 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 blah. Whatever. Anyway, anyways. Price broke out of that. We got the volatile dip. And sure enough, it does have a 200 moving average for <laughs> what it's worth. And price did bounce off of that for a little while. Um, but I drew this line out because I was looking at this institutional candle, I like to call these. We have a big push up that just doesn't match any other, you know, uh, bar around it. And then an instant push down that kind of engulfs it. That's usually where a lot of money's sitting. So I was telling people, like, you know, if we break to the downside, I wouldn't necessarily worry or be bearish. But I would look at this area because, as you can see, when price broke past this for the first time after making its initial all-time high, we um, – let me do this uh, one second. We broke past it, um, and then you see you break past it, a perfect retest, and then an engulfing candle. Yeah, now we're mega bullish, right? And then price comes down, almost tests it, and then we officially get that retest to confirm its structure as a support line. So that tells us that, okay, if we break out of here, Hedron probably wants to go down here. And then sure enough, Hedron got down here. Almost in the same situation, right? You see how we almost touched the line, and then we officially touched it right after? Kind of same thing. We almost touched it, yep. had the official touch, but this time around, we didn't get that mega bullish push up. And now price kind of just really took a hard hit underneath it. Um, now, to give you some updated analysis with that, all that being said, um, what I'm seeing in Hedron is good structure as of right now. Where is my – here it is. Good structure as of right now we're sitting at. All these lows, the support line that we had that became a resistance. Wick, 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 you know, just stretch that across. Now we're sitting in a nice solid support zone. If for whatever reason this doesn't hold, assuming that everything else in crypto does go down, right? Um, and Hedron has the potential to move up with everything else going down. Obviously, we saw it this year. 2022 yeah. was straight nothing but down into the right. Hedron gave us at least a few pumps, kind of sideways overall, but it did give us you know some solid movement. So, but I mean, the next area I would look is the initial all-time low where all this structure is. The wicks down here, a couple wicks that blew past it, but you have all this price action sitting here. 30% lower, I guess. Yeah. yeah something. I hope we don't get there, but. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I hope we don't either. But then again, it's like yeah, about 35%. So we, I can see potential 30 to 40% moves down. And that's across the whole market. But I would expect, like I said, now that tax harvesting is going to be done after today, some sort of relief rally. So if you're looking for confirmations to the downside, I would say you might still get at least this area touched, maybe a little bit of relief rally here, or price might want to go to this real support line. I, this is my favorite support line that could be resistance. Um, right here at this uh, 1748 ish range with all the zeros in front of it. I'm not going to count the zeros. Um, yeah. But yeah, if I'm looking to the downside, I want to see what price does in this area first. If we see some real resistance, I'm like, okay, you know, then I might start getting some sentiment to look down here. Um, but then again, hopefully, you're right. As an investor, I would like to see this kind of confirm and then boom, just turn that back to support. But we'll get there when we get there. We have to get there first to even have that conversation. But that's kind of where I'd be looking to in the short term. Quick question from Dixon Insider. Uh, what do you mean by tax harvesting, Jenkins? Mm -hmm. Pretty much just taking yeah, your Yeah, sorry, loss. I was drinking my water. But yeah, tax harvesting, basically people that are just taking their losses for capital gains reasons. Um and I don't even know if I should talk about taxes or anything on a stream, but yeah, like I said, I'm not a tax. That's a basic director. concept. Yeah. yeah, yeah, okay, fair enough. Yeah, so like basically people, investors that have been around for a while know that if you take a loss at the end of the year, 
next year for tax time, you get to file those losses and um, it helps for when you have to pay back taxes or if you just took more losses than gains, obviously you're not going to have to pay back. So people purposely take losses at the end of the year just to rebuy their position the very next year. Um, and that's what tax harvesting pretty much is. And it might not be the best word for it, but I call it tax harvesting. Yeah, you know, tax loss selling or yeah. whatever. There's a bunch of terms for it. Yeah. Uh, Mactastico just wanted to say hello. Hey, Cabana, first time coming on your channel. I've been watching all year. Thanks for the streams. Hope you have a good new year. Thank you very much. I appreciate the comment. So love seeing first time comments on here. Always feel free. We've got a great community and chat. In yeah. here. Um, well, we have we're time's starting to run down a little bit. So you tell me how, how much you got left. But we have a still a laundry list of coins to get through. Let's oh, yeah. do. You want to do uh, the Pulse Doge coin ecosystem really quick? Yeah, let's do that. Let me go to uh, Dex Tools real quick. Let me pull up another <clears> this chart. is called the triggering section of the show. So we are going to do some coins that trigger some and others are passionate about. So hold on. We, we will have Hex by the end of the show. <laughs> uh. Okay. So, oh, wait. Let me go to Pulse D real quick. PLSD, I guess the original that got that whole ecosystem started. Actually, I think TradingView has uh, this chart. I want to say I have it in my TradingView. Let me check. Oh, it does? Oh, uh, yeah. I usually use like Deck Screener or something, but Pulse D. Maybe for a lot of the. I think TradingView has it against Ethereum, so you can't see the actual dollar value, but let me show you. Oh, wait, I'm not showing you my. Here you go. You see my new chart? Oh, there you go. Yep. Um, so yeah, let's go to the daily chart here because we don't have this as much data. Let me uh, let's do this. Yeah, the USD one's way more fun though because it shows like the, I guess the three mountains and then it busted out of the triple top and then it came back down recently. Can you still see my chart? Yep. Okay, cool. Let's go to the daily chart because we don't have as much data either. Kind of like Hedron pulls um, Dogecoin. Now this is something. Obviously, That's a wild ride right there. <laughs> it is. It's it's so choppy, but this is like a trader's heaven. And yep. I mean, people that know me, I mean, I've been like, so leverage trading gets cancerous in my opinion, right? No one should ever leverage trade. I'm 100% with Richard Hart, but I'd be lying if I was saying that we're, we're all traders at the end of the day because we're taking our positions. The moment you buy something, you sell something, that's a trade, right? So leverage trading, obviously don't do, but like things like this, and I'm not saying to trade these types of coins, but for so, like for someone like me that has experience, this has kind of been like a trader's heaven. And I know a couple of traders that I talked to that we just literally follow the trends and support and resistance, kind of mess with this coin a little bit. Yeah. Um, I also it teased the breakout there above 10 for a couple of days. And it was mm -hmm. like, oh man, can it go? Can it go? And then nope, just right this back down. It. This yeah. is a weird non-traditional structured chart because... Like, you know, for Hedron, for example, right, you had the all-time high, and then you had that lower high, and then you get that triangle where it's like, okay, now it's bearish structure. Usually when you get a high and then you get a lower high, it's kind of like, okay, the next high is usually never higher. You never get, like, lower high, then higher high, then lower high. It's really right. weird and choppy, so it, it's kind of... I think that's a function of so many coins being burned for ASIC, uh, which we can look at here shortly, yeah. but, like, the... It's this thing is way thinner than what it was. We had like less than six million coins, and now it's down to like two some million, less than three million, something like that. So yeah, yeah, and it's yeah. a it's quite it's quite it's a trader's dream, as you said. For sure. <laughs> it really is. It really is. And like I said, when it comes to like the project and the people behind it, I know the people behind it had that tweet about like, oh, I'll keep using you hexagons as exit liquidity to pump my right. coin. I'm like, okay, I, that's kind of it's kind of messed up because all you guys are doing is promoting to hex, but whatever. Outside of that. For people that just like to look at charts and make money, um, yeah, it's really weird. It's hard to get an analysis. You can't even call this a head and shoulders because the two shoulders are higher than the actual head in that scenario. Um, but all in all, I mean, if you just the Batman really chart or something, yeah, you bring a trend line across. You're, you're in an uptrend. It's the choppiest uptrend I've probably ever seen for like a meme coin. But I mean, it's working, right? It's, it's doing its thing. It's following this channel. It is up and to the right. Um, but the only thing that concerns me about coins like these um, is that now that you have so many other coins involved, like with the ASIC and everything, that people start to divert their own attention away from their own coin. And yeah. who knows when that actual structure breaks, how low it could go. And it's one of those where it's like it could continue to keep going up. I feel like Pulse D has a solid community behind it. 
Um, it's just, yeah, once you start to dilute the amount of coins available, it kind of makes things tricky for people, you know. Um, as you see with Hex, the whole ecosystem that's behind it, all these other coins that people, the new shiny toy syndrome, whatever that they call it in Hex. Um, but all in all, just from a structural standpoint, what I'm looking at right now um, is just, yeah, I want to just kind of wait and see. So my position, I, I have my free claim bag. That's a bag that I'm always going to continue to hold. But my trader's bag, I guess, so to say, I am not holding my position. Um, once we kind of had this confirmation we were going down, I took myself out of it for a little bit, like how I have been following this. I'm not going to lie. This this move right here, once we got above this trend line and had this big push, I thought we had some support. I did yeah. buy in and I fooled myself. So obviously you're not, you're going to win some and lose some. Of course, that's why I don't recommend them, but keep those stops tight. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so absolutely. So, um, but right now I'm just kind of sitting at my hands, right? We do have a little bit of a support line here, a horizontal support line, right? Some structure here going across. You can extend this all the way back. You have the wicks here. Yeah, check that out. Yep. There. So, I mean, there's some nice structure, right? Um, but what I'm kind of doing is waiting because this volatile drop here, shows me that okay price usually when you get a wick that big price wants to kind of fill that and if you kind of extend it over you do have some previous wicks so um we're kind of in like a sideways market inside of a sideways market if that makes sense so we're sideways up into the right but now we're starting to get a little sideways horizontally at least in the current price so i'm just kind of sitting on my hands waiting to see if price decides to get under this horizontal support line and also what it does with this upward channel at the bottom what are we going to do what kind of yeah structure will it give us before i decide what i want to do yeah and another one that ties into this uh i guess we can do that next is asic so yes. that has pretty much directly affected the supply of uh pulse doge coin here um but asic's the the new kid on the block and new you know, kid on the, the, block. the the ecosystem fam likes to call it the the money printer um you know because you use it to to print tokens from you know for the ecosystem so it's a very unique concept and you know props to these guys for building something different i know you know they've gotten into a spat with uh richard hart over the past week or so but uh i think that could have been avoided had you not poked the bear but to, yeah to each their own and you know i don't i don't <laughs> think that was the the best avenue to take just stay in your lane and enjoy your ecosystem but whatever i'm, I'm going off on a tangent here but, but it's like this, one, this one's interesting um so we could potentially i guess come back and test the two dollar level is that what you're looking at here maybe yeah absolutely just looking at a structural standpoint and what do you look for i, I guess just as a a curious question on my end like a chart is so young right so like this, we got like a couple months into this like how how when do you get a structure that you feel like you can rely on or are you just taking it like day by day and like we can see here like two bucks might be the most recent thing that we can go by yeah, I would say, um, so the first thing with brand new coins, whether it's a meme coin or not, low liquidity coins, the first thing you want to do is pay attention. Market cap's a vanity metric, I get it, but market cap kind of does matter when you're brand new. It um, matters till it doesn't. And I know yeah, Richard exactly. Hart well, likes to say it's a vanity metric, and I know Hexkins parrot it, but until it doesn't matter, it does. And so far, it has. Yeah. yeah sorry, absolutely. not sorry. <laughs> no absolutely and if people that have experience like ourselves obviously like it matters right because if you're sitting at a, a 500k market cap and this thing point pumps to 1.7 you're like okay there's real money getting pushed into this and you the price chart usually resembles that once you get to 10 20 million or whatever it's like, okay now it's like you kind of start seeing some fundamental sort of like okay we might see a slowdown whatever but then obviously once you know months and years pass then market cap kind of doesn't matter but early on it really does um, but what I'm looking for before I even look at the chart is obviously the liquidity is one thing. Um, but one thing I look for is the holders each day. Are the holders increasing? And, oh, excuse me, my lemon water I'm drinking is making me burp. Um, <laughs> the holders, are they increasing? Um, to be honest with you, I haven't paid too close attention to the holders of ASIC because I'm not really into like trading this too much. I, you know, I got my bag, do my mining and everything just to get involved. So I'm, I'm happy with that right now. I don't want to trade too many things at once. But um, looking at the chart, yeah. So outside of that, for to answer your first question, I'm looking at holders, I'm looking at market cap, and I want to see consistent growth. I want to go to the telegram. How engaged are people? If I if I join, you know, I don't even know if ASIC has a telegram, but let's say the ASIC has a telegram 
if I join it, there's 200 members today. I check it again in three days. Are you up to six, 800? That's a good sign. If I don't check the chat for three hours, are, is there hundreds or thousands of messages? That's that. Those are the type of things that I'm looking at that I've learned um, over the years that really matter when it comes to crypto. Now, from a price chart standpoint, um, this I don't have all my favorite saves. Let me find it. Structure, of course. Um, the first all-time high after launch is always going to be a good area to look at. And obviously, if you extend this thing across, go figure, tap, 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 tap. So we definitely had um, a resistance level from the get-go that finally just got broken through. Now, almost something this new, I can... I'm not going to make a guarantee, right? But I can almost guarantee that this thing's going to want to at least fill this for a structural standpoint because um, to show health in the market, you want to see structures. So like impulse correction, you you finally break past this uh, resistance line, impulse, you want to correct and you really want to see resistance <clears throat> confirmed to a support line. If you get down here, and you see a little bit of a bounce off, it's like, okay, one, two, three, four, you usually see three to five wave movements. So we're already creating a fourth wave now. At the very least, like if I'm a trader, right? <laughs> um, I would look around- great at, entry if you're looking Yeah, I'm looking around that $2 entry. I'd probably put my little buy limit a little bit higher just to get in. And at the very least, if you wanna play it safe and start taking some profits, at least your initial entry around that 340 range, you should at least get somewhat of a close to all time high pump but then again, like I was talking about Hedron, if you get that first all-time high and then you get that second pump that creates like a lower high kind of double top, well, you're still looking to, you know, at least play it safe and take profits there. And then, but once you get there, you can figure, okay, are we going to get this triangle pattern, right? And then we'll look low or are we just simply going to get all-time highs and then turn this into a support line? But that's that's too far in advance, but at least to give, I guess, your viewers that kind of idea that's kind of what I'm looking at, but at least short term, yeah, that two dollar range looks pretty juicy right now. I, I, it looks really good too. The, the structure is nice. And it's really interesting these coins within the Pulse Chain ecosystem, and I'm sure more will come out. But these specifically, uh, I'm watching Freddie Quotes' comments in here because these are specific situations that only people in the community are really aware of. So you have a group of people investors what have you whatever call them whatever you want who are very focused on this ecosystem and you know like it or not they're telling you what they're doing and they're using you know perhaps hex and or hedron um, as their liquidity to kind of support this like it or not you know if that support is there that's its own unique situation and unique factor into price so you know perhaps those same guys are looking at what jenkins is showing you right here and maybe there's a buy wall coming, you know, down at two bucks. It's just a, a very interesting, I guess my point is a, a situation where you, you can, you know, know some of the holders of these coins and um, I guess put that together with, you know, kind of the, the other factors like telegram groups and wallet go up and things like that, like uh, yeah. Pulse Bitcoin. Oh, I guess we can look there because we're kind of running short on time but uh make sure we get to the the really good stuff here at the end but if we can take a look at pulse bitcoin um i'm not I, I don't watch it like a hawk but i'm pretty sure the wallet count has gone up from what i've seen on twitter so that community is excited about that and uh, that's kind of what you want to see especially in a, in a bear market what's the ticker for pulse bitcoin is it pulse plsb yeah that's what it was i'm over here there's so many tickers nowadays oh wait whoops Let's be against USDC. There you go. Make sure we got the right one. So we're kind of at the bottom of the range there. Yeah, let me extend this. And I got a little extra time too. My uh my haircut, my barber's really cool. So oh cool. Awesome. Um yeah, pulse. Yeah, fear not, fans. We have uh the best for last is coming up. We're gonna look at some ETH and uni possibly speculate when we get pulse and pulse x layer this year and of course uh the grand chart of them all hex so absolutely um yeah so pulse bitcoin is just literally a sideways moving market right now um th these are the markets i mean if you're really a degenerate you can trade the ranges i don't know if you've read that book called trading in the zone um i mean probably i mean it's not most people probably haven't because most people aren't traders trying to be good traders, but <coughs> excuse me, 
Um, zone trading um, is basically if you're sideways, you want to see a break and retest to move to the next zone, right? And this we kind of had it for a while, but then it just dipped really hard. Um, but you really don't want to trade a sideways market whatsoever. Or if you're looking for entries, I mean, if you're dollar cost averaging, of course, you can get in and, you know, hold, do whatever you got to do. You, we are looking at a support line right now. Um, but like I said, unless you're an absolute degenerate, degenerate, just trying to just buy this bottom just to sell this top and hopefully stay sideways, I guess. But I wouldn't even recommend that. You have this bearish doji engulfing candle that we've seen here that usually shows that price wants to continue moving down. And we've seen that. But honestly, with this coin, with this chart at least, there's not really anything that entices me or excites me that gets my attention outside of, okay, this thing breaks below yeah. Right. And I mean, it's at the bottom of the range. If you feel like fishing, I guess there's there'd be, you know, not much of a better time to do it. But it's so young in its life that it's like, man, it's a wild card, too. Yeah, it's a brand new coin, too. So it's like you kind of have to put the price chart aside. And if you want to get involved in the project, just get involved, dip your feet in if you want. But four point yeah. eight thousand holders, liquidity solid. Yeah, I think um, the number's market. gone up. So that's good news for them. Market caps. So the thing about these type of charts, right? Um, market caps kind of high for being as low as the price is. If the price is this low, I would want to see like a sub one million market cap. That's just me for being a meme coin guy. I guess Pulse Bitcoin, I guess, isn't a meme coin, but whatever it is to me. Um, yeah, it's kind of a high market cap for being so low. And granted, I know like a lot of people are kind of like grandfathered into this bit based on like what they're doing with, you know, their ASIC mining and stuff, but um, yeah, this is like there's so many other things in this yeah. system alone that you can really look at structure and be like, hey, this is something that is pretty much safer. Um, but yeah, this is something that I'm not really going to give much attention to when it comes to buying or selling until I really see a breakout to the upper downside. Hopefully, it's not to the downside because that just like we're if you have some ASIC, like I think you said you had, then you're minting it anyway. So yeah, exactly. Like, there's no need to you know pour money you know into it why not you know save that money for hex at you know 1.5 cents if we get there i'm teasing i'm teasing we'll get the hex don't worry and i think too yeah like you said if you're minting your coins not many people there's not much buy pressure for that reason i think that's why the price chart stays sideways right now but eventually right there has to be some type of demand and it's funny because these guys are like oh we don't need pulse chain or anything to be successful and i'm like you guys literally have pulse chain <laughs> in every one of your names like or pulse at least so right it's it's kind of funny how that works, but um, but yeah, so that's that's kind of that. All right. Well, we've gone through that ecosystem and I've triggered crypto Kool-Aid. Good morning, my friend. Love you. Kool-Aid, shout out to <laughs> my man Kool-Aid. Um let's let's do another triggering one. Let's let's look at Zen. Zen, the Zenic Zenikin, Zenicorns. The most bullish chart in crypto right now. <laughs> If you flip it upside down. Hey, Zen, I'm not going to lie. Like, I'm not going to sit here and shill Zen and, you know, because I just, I don't want to, I'm not the type of person that wants to get on the internet anymore and deal with people complaining. So I'm like, I'm not going to really do any shilling. But I will say Zen, <laughs> the last couple of days has honored some price, oh, whoops, has honored some nice price action. It's a big red candle. Oh, wait. Yeah, that was a huge red candle. I mean, yeah. This is like a roller coaster on the way. That's like a big drop or something, that giant drop at Six Flags. Um, but with Zen, I will say from the bottom at least, um, we've had some nice triangles, right? A little triangle broke out to the downside. A little triangle. This is in the four. Let me go to like the one hour because this thing is kind of you need to you need to really go on the small time frames to get some, I guess, analysis on here. Um, but triangle breakout, retest, confirm down. Price moves up, triangle, breakout, boom, triangle, breakout. So yesterday was the, the Zen FT launch day. And um, it was kind of a buy the rumor, sell the news or buy, buy the, yeah, buy the rumor, sell the news type of event. And it was kind of like, you know, I'm not going to say obvious because price can go either way anytime. In hindsight, but, that's obvious. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny. And I'll tell you a story uh, in a second, but um, obviously price has this massive, support line that it did have at once and then it broke under now it's a massive resistance whenever you touch a massive resistance line like that and you get a triangle that builds usually price does not want to break above it it's probably gonna go to the downside unless we're in a bull market but in a bear market it usually wants to go down if you pair that with the buy the rumor sell the news event like the zenx the zenft launch yesterday 
I mean, there's a lot of writings in the wall, but a little bit of a funny story. I was actually watching, I, I joined, I didn't join his stream, but I was in the chat of uh, Jim Rack Crypto. He was doing like a live NFT launch. I was doing my tax harvesting. So I put him on in the background and <laughs> for whatever reason, he just had to go out there. He's like, you know, he's talking about all the galaxy brain stuff. Like, oh, triangles don't matter, this and that. I'm like, you know, like triangles do matter. Like technical analysis won't do anything for price. But if you're an individual trying to make financial decisions for yourself, you want to understand technical analysis. It's a tool that everybody needs to know, right? It's not the end all be all. It's not going to be 100% right. But if you know how to look at a chart and you look at certain structures and setups, you can make decisions and pr protect yourself from a lot of things. But he was on there like, oh, like triangles don't matter, blah, 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 this and the third. I'm in the chat. Like it kind of does. And he's getting like mad at me for it. And then the funny thing about all that, as he's saying that, Zen prints a triangle right when it launches. And I'm like, okay, triangle breakout. Boom, triangle breaks out. Then I'm like, oh, we got a support line in here, Zed0043. And he's like, oh, you're just doing like a salad words or whatever. Like we don't do that over here because it's a bunch of nonsense. I'm like, it's it's simple stuff though, but it was pretty funny that like he was just bashing like technical analysis his whole stream as you get a perfect triangle set up that broke out and bounced off a support line and then you know so um with all that being said though zen broke under its first support mini support line that it had after breaking out of that initial triangle and then now this other triangle at the tip you extend that out you got this bunch of price action here now we're getting a little bit of a support line there um not really bullish structure whatsoever but i don't trade zen by any means because like it's been dropping so hard to the point that like i don't want to risk taking a buy entry and then just having to go all the way down right away but like minting zen like i said me i'm i'm not a maxi towards anything i love hex and i respect the community and i respect the ecosystem so, so much to the point that i'm always going to talk about things that are important and not just shill garbage to people but at the same time, like I'd be crazy if I didn't get myself at least involved in any of these projects. So I will say minting Zen, I'm not against that. But buying it, it's not really showing us much just yet. I feel like th there's not really a demand for buyers. Although we have had about, I think it was like a 2x pump in the past like week or so. Uh, oh, no, it was like a 3, 3x pump, over 3x of a pump in a, in a nine day span. So that was kind of cool to see. But that pump kind of finally hit its end once we had the resistance from the previous structure on top of the, the Zen NFT launch event. Nice. All right. What do we have left on the list? Oh, it's the most exciting stuff that probably everybody wants to see the most. So if you've listened to happy hour recently um i've said i think we get a pulse chain launch by may of this year mm. and i think of you know some other uh, community members have said things similar some said june some have said april anyway if we get a pulse chain launch later this year it would be possible jenkins to take a look at the beginnings of eth and I know we could do, you know, other chains as well, but we only have yeah. a certain amount of time. But let's go back to the way back days of ETH and um, see what we could uh, perhaps get out of the initial launch phase yeah. there. So, shoot, this took me back to the current day. <laughs> um, let's go here. So ETH, right? Um, so ETH had that pre-sale kind of like similar to the pulse chain sacrifice ish, you know, whatever. Um, excuse me. Um, I want to say this wick, I think is, I don't think this is a true wick, right? This is, yeah, I wouldn't really count that one. Yeah. Cause I want to say like the actual bottom was around like 30 cents or so, yeah. or just, or just about so. But anyways, what I'm trying to get at is uh, let me try to make this simple without going too like technical and confusing people. So, I did this on a stream with Gerardo last year. Shout out to Gerardo. Um, yeah, Gerardo. We kind of did the math of what like the average pre-sale price was for Ethereum for the people that gave their Bitcoin to it. And it was about like 30 cents per Ethereum that they got, right? The same way that like for Pulse, if you sacrifice day one, you got like 0. 0.0001 or whatever it is. I'm, I'm so bad with naming zeros, but we know that math. Um, so if you did the pre-sale for ETH, you were about like 30 cents or so for your pre-sale for what you got as I guess like 
comparably like an airdrop, I guess. Um, and then what we had on launch day was price started up about 10 X from that point. Right. So, um, tell me the number for pulse. Is it four zeros and a one or three zeros and a one? Pretty sure it's four Four zero. Okay. I think it is two. So, um, if we're comparing the two, so Ethereum started off at 10 X that price. If pulse is at point zero, 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 one, it basically would start off at like three zeros and a one, right? And I'm not trying to confuse people. So like 0. 0.0001 sack price. Oh, wait, wait. So this is like the sack price roughly. Um, if it's compared to the ETH Genesis stage. Clash is saying three and a one. Three and a one is a That sack looks price? actually right. So three and a one, yeah. okay. Yeah. So, okay, even better then. Um, it, it, it makes sense seeing it. Instead of like trying to say it, yeah, in my I, mind, I'm over yeah. naming them. I always confuse myself doing this. But yeah, T birds. Okay. Yeah, that looks right. Yep. Okay, so if this is the scenario, kind of like how ETH is, we were the people that sacrificed have this value for their dollars, so to say. We know we have no expectation of work and blah blah blah, whatever. Um, or no expectation of profit. Um, but the launch price, you probably based on the ETH chart, look at something like this, a 10x higher launch, and then an immediate, maybe a wick close to the range. I feel like this wick, I don't think I've seen any chart except for this one now that where ETH went down to 14 cents. It went to like 35 cents or something. But um, there's no way the sacrifices are going to allow the price to go below what they sacrificed for two years ago. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know, man. There's a lot out there. there. There's so many factors involved now that like there's a lot of anger that wasn't there, you know, say back in May. Like there was so much excitement. Like there's I, I you, you say that and I, I would have totally agreed with that months and months ago. But now it just feels different. We're deeper into the bear that I think, you know, we could have some irrationality creep in and just people just dump it and you know ray right at the beginning just to to take their money and run because they've been so frustrated um, you would it, you would think and then like i get that and i i do but you gotta think like first of all talk is cheap for people when it comes to that when pulse actually watches, yeah. people are gonna see their bag and be like oh my god i have my coins finally and if they want to dump it well there you go that's where we factor in this massive dip right away right and maybe yeah. you can wick under the sacrifice price for a little bit but it, it, in my opinion it's not gonna stay there but like how you see the first, let's see how many days was this? Pretty much from launch price all the way till its initial bottom. About two months, just about two, two and a half months we had of just a negative 86% dip. This is where all those angry people are probably going to first get out, but then eventually see like, okay, a little bit of a pump, I'm hopeful. And then they just see everyone getting out, getting out because they hate Richard Hart. They hate the, whatever the case may be. People are going to lose hope early on. And it's kind of like that first three months, 100 days to where you, you get through that. And man, in a bear market, if you can hang on through that phase, look look at what happens after that. I mean, that's... yeah, exactly, exactly. So that's kind of where it's at. Like, I think it's inevitable whenever you have like a pre-sale ICO, I guess sacrifice phase. All these things are kind of natural, right? Um, but yeah, I would expect you know probably like a 10x launch price dip right down to close to where that sacrifice price was. I would bank on the sacrificers holding that floor. Cause I know for myself, I'm going to buy more pulse. I'm going to be actively adding to the bag, pulse, pulse, X, everything um, on launch day. I'm not going to just sit there with my sacrifice bag and be like, Oh, I'm chilling. Although I do feel like a lot of people will be in that situation. So that's one factor that might be a little different. It's like the buy pressure might not be as strong right out the get go. Cause so many people getting hammered by a bear market might not have the actual capital to buy. And they might wait for you know hex to hopefully pump or something, but that, that's one thing to factor in. But the the average experienced person that's in the markets right now is gonna be prepared for this launch. I mean, it's been almost two years coming now. So um, but yeah, I mean launch prices, I can expect something like this, maybe see the price dip to like point uh like zero, like this maybe like point zero zero, whatever, one, eight, nine, or something like that, you know. To get somewhere around there before it finds its floor and works its way up and then everything beyond that i mean it's just a total guess right so to give people insight but that's exciting yeah absolutely. <laughs> look at that oh boy yeah so if we get into that, a bull that oh. time it's 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 pretty impressive so if you're going from all-time low to all-time high in ethereum 
what is that? Worth there's no commas here. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one point two million percent. Is that nice. yeah. yeah? So the hex did what a million percent almost. Um, let me just make sure this is right. Yeah, yeah. So hex hex did just under what Ethereum did, but then again, Ethereum. What is this time frame? Two thousand something days. So that that's quite some time. So that's five, like seven, eight years or so. Um, before actually getting there, Hex is three years into it. So I would assume that Hex would want to get past that number by the time it hits its seventh or eighth year, you know? Uh, but anyways, for Pulse Chain purposes, I mean, obviously, if you're talking a million percent on, and you can do this math, but if you're, if you're talking a million percent based on the sacrifice price, I don't even want to talk about that number because that's like that's like beyond Moon Boy right now, right? So uh, I'll, I mean, I'll, I'll let you handle that. Yeah, if you keep, if you keep this right here where it is, I mean, look how small that window is initially and all the people that panicked and got out way down there in the bottom left and then look what happens after that so if you could as bob Lagai says in the voice of wilson phillips hold on for one more day <laughs> if you can do that for say 90 100 days or t- Till you get out of that phase, you are massively rewarded. There, there it is, right there. So that bottom left, those people who who held on for a few months, and once you finally break out of, you know, that initial phase, there, man, that that could be something. So, yeah. yeah, absolutely, and yeah, that's and the thing about it too, it's like it sounds amazing. Like, oh my god, is this too good to be true? Like, no, every new crypto that's not a rug pull scam is gonna pump crazy, right? Anything with product market fit. I mean, meme coins have been the theme of 2021, 2022, honestly. Like, Hex had its run in 2021, and it crushed it. But, like, late 21 to all year of 2022, meme coins are the only things making people money in crypto, which is kind of funny because it's like, wow, like, what does the world come to? But then again, like, instead of me complaining about it, like, oh, why aren't the real things pumping? I was like, let me just go join the party and get my bag, right? And obviously, I'm not overperforming my bull market numbers, but I'm also not just... I didn't sit in my hands 97% down in hex, just letting my bag, you know, abuse itself. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, every, everything pumps in crypto, especially when a bull market comes back around. And that's why my opinion, Richard Hart's just waiting for the bear market to bottom so he can launch in the right condition so we can just get a nice, healthy God mode chart where it's just up and to the right, like how hex was the first three years, you know? So it's the I right. I'm in agreement. Sir. Uh, some people don't like that uh, thought, but I. I why wouldn't you? Um, I, I and what's he gonna say? Is, is he just gonna come out and say, "I am waiting for the the bottom of the bear"? No, he's not gonna say that. No responsible founder would say that. So, you know, at, and at the same time, he's also said the best you know charts can you know happen usually if you're launching in a bear. So, take that yeah. for what it is. He said that in the past. He's actually said that. So. And I've been saying this for a long time, like ever since we had that first two month delay or whatever in Pulse in 2021, I was just kind of like, uh, yeah, he's definitely waiting for the bottom. And people were just like, oh, Richard Hart said he's not waiting for the bottom. Like, of course, you expect Joe Biden to come say what his war strategy is. Right. right now. Exactly. <laughs> like, come on. Like, we, we, we had to play politics here. You gotta have to read between the lines. And I don't ever mean to like, uh, like pick at Richard Hart or kind of like you know, attack him or anything, but at the same time for like the sake of transparency in the community, I'm just a normal human and I have to get my analysis on what I'm It's saying. okay to disagree and have a viewpoint that isn't of the founders. Like I, I love him. I think he's, you know, founded just awesome stuff. Obviously Hex is proven. I think Pulse Chain and Pulse X, you know, are going to be outstanding. Um, it, it's okay to not 100% agree and or parrot everything from the founder that you like it's okay that's independent thought is healthy all right absolutely Ran yeah over. i already been through that phase of you you kind of go against the grain you kind of go through the little mini cancel culture phase of hex <laughs> like okay at least people already know who i am we're all on the same team it's just you know yeah it's i'm okay. like guys like i am 100 percent. i'm not an og hexican i'm not like a day one guy but like i am so for hex and i'm so supportive of this coin this community and this ecosystem but i'm like i I'm sorry I can't just give you guys what you want to hear all the time. If I disagree with Richard Hart, like you guys got to just like understand like that's healthy because some someone on the outside looking in, just looking at a bunch of nut huggers, are like, 
they're not going to like that and that drives them away. So I feel like a little bit of transparency and a little bit of dialect helps newcomers. Well, we have, uh, you know, our little pulse fantasy comparison here. Let's take a quick look at uh, maybe uni really yeah. quick. And um, yeah, I have uni on since here. we have pulse X coming up just for fun here. And then we'll get to yes. the grand finale. Let's uh, where try. we've been and where we could go. I'll do Uniswap on Gemini, maybe. That might have the Genesis stage. I think this is. I believe so. If, if someone in the chat has a better chart, let me know. But I'm pretty sure Uniswap, they, I think it launched in 2018, but the, they duct taped the token like in 2020. I'm not fully sure, but I'm pretty sure this is the most accurate price chart that dates back to history, at least. Um, but I, what I will say for Uniswap, though, is this has nothing to do with the coin, um, unlike Pulse X, which the coin is going to have a lot to do with it, especially with the buy and burn feature and everything, you know. So I would expect the Pulse X chart to look a lot healthier. Um, but what Uniswap's price chart did do um, upon launch, launched around the $5 mark, instant dip, just like how we saw for Pulse X or uh, for Ethereum. <laughs> Um, what was that about a 70 ish percent dip in the first? That's only, yeah, about 42 days, so about a month and a half, roughly. Then we kind of found its bottom, created this little triangle. And I can go on the four hour chart and do better price analysis, but just to kind of give a macro picture of all this, once it found its bottom, this thing just totally ran up. Granted, this is what happens when you launch a coin in a bear market, right? Or in a bull market, right? Um, you launch a coin in a bull market, this is the type of price action you get. And this is why I say it's the right thing for Richard Hart to do to wait for at least the end of the bear market or at least close to it is because of that. You're going to get a price chart that's going to be up and to the right because even if the coin's garbage and has no product market fit, it's going to go up just based on the conditions of the world. People are going to be pouring their money into crypto and mass adoption is going to continue to happen as the world becomes more digital, blah, blah, blah. So, um this wasn't like an insane run up, but it was, you know, what, like 25, like 2,500 percent. So, I mean, that, that's a good chunk of money for a coin that has nothing to do with the exchange. So I want to put too much into this kind of experiment just because, like I said, Uniswap token and Uniswap exchange have nothing to do with each other. Yeah. Pulse chain or Pulse X will. And I expect Pulse X to look a lot healthier. Of course, this thing just been dumping since the bear market kind of started, and now it's kind of back to its original price, at least for quick technical analysis. You extend the initial <laughs> price. I mean, there you go. Yeah, right. So you first broke that all time high or the starting price, had the the tap, confirmed support, confirmed support, broke under, um, doji engulfing candle, confirmed support again, support, support. We're sitting at support now. Could it break under? It could. I mean, you know, you can look at something like this. I doubt there's, well, that's a not so straight line, but right. And I doubt there's any Uniswap holders there, but yeah, at least. Sold <laughs> all the <laughs> airdrop tokens for Hex. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of, yeah, exactly so. But for what it's worth, this is what it looks like when you drop an exchange token, I guess, in a bull market. You get this type of price action. And PulseX, you add a buy and burn feature to that when there's actual real volume and liquidity inside the exchange. That's definitely going to help. It'll prevent dips like this, I would say, like where it's just kind of dead in the water. As long as people are transacting, buying, selling Pulse or PHEX or Pulse X or instead, anytime you're doing a transaction, you're adding money to that buy and burn. Is that buy and burn going to hold the price up? Like, no, but it's going to definitely, you would think it would help, right? It's one of those where it's like you, you call a coin deflationary. So everyone's like, oh, super bullish. Right? Like, yeah, right. Yeah, but like bear market still happen right so um but the buy and burn is an intriguing feature that i think it'll definitely help for times like this i don't think it'll drag and be like a, just a straight pump and dump coin all right well let's get to the grand finale and what everybody is here for where we've come from this <laughs> rough bear market year actually you know maybe longer than that and where we could possibly go Let's look at Hicks. Let's look at Hicks. So, um, quick macro analysis. Price chart from day one, looking real good, right? <laughs> um, and this is a level like a penny and a half that you've cited before, and 
we're not quite there yet, but this is this is exactly why you've cited this level, I think, before. Because look at look at this. Yeah, I mean that entire year of 2020 pre uh, big payday, post big payday, we couldn't break past this level. We stayed sideways early 2021, couldn't break, and then we finally started the bull run. We got the bull run by confirming this 1.3 ish range. As a support line, the moment we turn this, let me delete this box real quick and turn it into a line. Boom, boom, boom. The moment we turn this whole entire resistance area to a support line, it, we kicked off um, the bull run of 2021. So that's the first real resistance level, you know. And, and way back when, that was the run up to big payday and then the massive sell off yeah. down there. And then we sell off, yeah. Broke out of it. Tested it, failed. Come back up. <laughs> test, fail, and then test. It's broken, success. Break it, and then support, and off to the races. Yep. Uh, give me one second. Sorry, let me see this thing real quick. Uh, oh no. Sorry, give me one second. For sure. Okay. All right, we're all good. Um, yeah. So you extend this line out, like unfortunately so back in july for context i tweeted that i can foresee the hex bottom being between 1.7 cents and like two and a half so 1.7 actually got hit recently and it became a temporary you know a local bottom do i know if it's gonna hold i mean there's not much much structure there although there is you know some structure if you extend that right you got this yeah here, that. That tap there. so we are hitting a nice support line so i'd expect at least a relief rally for hex how high can that relief rally go i'll, I'll get into the micro analysis real quick after this but macro analysis yeah so we're sitting at a, a local support line um but yeah this one point one and a half range let's just say for easy terms you have that's really where you're going to see probably a big bounce if we do decide to go that low we're going to see probably a big bounce off of that you're probably going to see a lot of buyers start to flood the market into that now, I would say worst case scenario, and I don't think it's going to get this bad, but if you go back to almost like six tenths to eight tenths of a penny, that's probably like the absolute worst case scenario, but I don't I don't see that happening. There's there's so much money sitting. And in your there. buying power is multi multiplied at these levels. You know, yeah. You so much more hex. So if big players want to come in. You know, I just don't think that there's – I don't foresee – the price going that low because that's that's too cheap i mean that you're talking like really cheap hacks like that that's something where i'm gonna freak out and have to just go buy a ton of you know like sell everything. the cars the cattle the house yeah oh yeah I, I would sell, my, sell my unborn kid <laughs> yeah. um but i don't see it going that low but worst case like if richard hart keeps on the trajectory he's on right now maybe he can keep can, Continuing to kill the X price, right? But that's macro analysis. So to give you guys some micro analysis now, kind of up to date stuff. Are we back on trading view? Um, do you see my trading view chart? Yep. Um, yeah. So we got this little floor at one point seven cents right now. Um, kind of going back. So we had the three cent range. That was the initial capitulation dip from summertime that held up for a little bit. That's when everyone's like, Oh, well, the bottom's in and the all day community was just telling everybody the bottom's in. I'm like, that's not the right time to call bottom. I, I'm not saying I'm right or wrong or have the crystal ball, but you don't want to call bottom fresh off capitulation. It's at least going to give you some type of movement down um, at least sideways movement. But you know, we had a bunch of bounces off this three cent range. We had one last hope to kind of give us a nice little impulse. Obviously, we have all these – you extend these resistance levels. If you go to my Twitter, not to, like, talk about myself too much, if you go to my Twitter, we marked this entire thing down and basically call the five-cent top and a seven-cent top in August and in October. Um, not call the top, but point it out, like, hey, here's resistance. If it respects it, it's going down type stuff, you know? So – tangent this- also tried to call it, and Will Willis passed it. <laughs> Dude, there's a there's a we lot just could of, not get past it but. yeah there's a lot of uh there's a lot of bottom calling right and because i said i foresee a bottom happening like six months ago around this range i gotta stick with that right i can't just be like oh i didn't call the bottom yet but i'm like in these conditions i didn't expect the price to look this week right yeah. fast forwarding six months from when i said that i expected better structure 
I will say it looks a little weaker than anticipated, so I'm not going to hang myself on like, oh, the bottom has to be in, right? But it's cool to see that we are getting a bounce here right now. But anyways, yeah, we finally broke under this three cent range, found some support at two cents, right? Now we we did have support for a little bit. If we get to that lower channel, though, I mean, if you're bullish hex, like that is the ultimate sweet spot, in my opinion. Yeah, and that's we're talking. You can get as low as thirty percent. I mean, that's a significant drop. Yeah, percentage wise, I guess it's you know twenty percent or maybe more. But the cool thing is that 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 far away. Yeah, there's there's not many more pennies we can lose, so that's kind of (laughs) cool. We're we're down to our last two pennies. So, Um, but yeah, I mean that drop can go in line with 40 percent drops across the market you know and you're looking at there's just so much money sitting there even if you get to the middle of this range somehow some way you can see some wicks down there but um there's a lot of money sitting down here i don't foresee a floor being too much lower than this range so um but yeah so um after uh, breaking under the three cent line we got the two cent support line that temporarily held we confirmed three cents as resistance that was telling us like yeah we're probably going down we finally broke under the two cent line a little bit of a retest, but prices kind of like a falling knife at that point, right? So, what I want to show at least for like up to date what's happening right here, right now. Don't mind all these boxes. I know I'm drawing a lot, but look at this 1.7 range. I mean, that's 1.7 cents to the exact like penny. I mean, oh yeah, check that out. I mean, that's that's like spot on. So at least I'm gonna give myself credit for that much at least. Um, but now we have this downward kind of micro channel, you know, wick, wick, wick. We have four wicks in this range and we've actually touched 1.7 on the dot. Now we've got a little bit of a curvature going up, you know, tax harvesting season is probably almost over. People might want to start getting, you know, back into the markets and stuff, getting a little bit of a relief rally, but based on percentages, the same way we can't go too far down in terms of what uh, uh, a penny or a unit drop would be like a nice pump up 20, ish percent puts us at 2.3 cents um if we're going to get a little bit of a relief rally now i'd probably look at the boom there you go yeah and it's like bottom of those wicks yeah yeah you don't want to you don't if you're super bullish on hex and you can't stand to see price dip at all you don't want to see this range turn into a resistance line if that happens then yeah you can probably bet that we're going to come fulfill this 1.3 to 1.5 range and that, that might take a while, right? Early 2023. But that's where you're going to probably start seeing, you know, the first few months of 23, Q1 maybe. Um, maybe early Q2 or you might start seeing some bottoms start to form. Hopefully we start getting the bottom of the bear market around that time. Not I think that's, that's my viewpoint, but who knows? I, I, w- I would agree with you there. I would like because you can't, you can't look down forever, right? Um, and I would say to look for a bottom, maybe like, yeah, Q1, early Q2 of 2023, we might get a bottom. That doesn't mean that we're going to get a straight bullish run right after that. And you might see the bottom be in, and then we might stay between a penny and 10 cents for the rest of the year. And then, you know, 2024, who knows? You pulse change the big variable here. Pulse exactly. So huh. free speech is like, the question is, what will cause a reversal? And you just nailed it. Pulse yeah. chain. <laughs> like, that's the bottom, in my opinion. Like, absolutely if you're not in you know by then the train's going to leave the station uh the question you know ultimately is when and um you know if you know the answer to that then you'll know in to be in hex and have your position (laughs) locked in before then and i will say the rsi is the lowest it's ever been in hex so i mean you can't get too too much lower of course so and i will also say too let's see if i can make this comparison so while hex um, had its big capitulation um, back midsummer. Bitcoin stayed sideways. Then when Hex went sideways, Bitcoin went below 20k. Now Bitcoin sideways right now, while Hex is capitulating again, right? Yeah, so, and that that did look nice for Hex for a while there, and I commented on it, but yeah, we just couldn't hold it. So. But what I will say is, if that repeats itself, right, you might get some sort of like capitulation down and then say bitcoin takes its journey from 16k to 10k between january and may of 2023 maybe you find hex going sideways again so maybe the hex isn't decorrelated in the sense of like a bull market in the midst of a bear market but it could be decorrelated in the sense of like hey if everything else is capitulating it's going to stay sideways but hex is going to capitulate before maybe hex is kind of leading the way that's kind of a little bit of hopium there but it'd be a, a sexy there. resolution right there i mean right? I, i'd love to see that tested multiple times ideally before summer maybe you know 
climb up in May before June. But yeah, I, yeah. I, I really like that if that played out. Yeah, uh, so... perfect technically. Just using that pre previous uh, set of tops there in late 21, or excuse me, late 2020 as support and off to the races we go again in the next bull. Yeah, and people got to realize too um, for Hex, and I won't say too much longer because that goes in, but for Hex at least, um, people that are giving up on Hex, like I get it, right? But like you have to understand, like the lack of pulse. I know there's no expectations of work or whatever from pulse, but the promises, the non promised promises that we got for pulse, they didn't come to fruition, and we got the dip. And then we got a sacrifice phase. So we had a, a bullshit pump right there. And then we just, the whales played the whales games, right? And then we had hopes of mid-May. So we got another pump. <laughs> and then it didn't happen. So we capitulated again. Capitulation after the first pulse change didn't come. Sacrifice phase pump. Price was just dead because there's no pulse. And then we had hopes of pulse chain again. So we pumped. And then pulse chain didn't happen again. Another capitulation. So the reason why this chart is just looking so bad this year is because of the fact of pulse chain not being here and because of all the politics around it. So I just feel like people have to realize like when pulse chain comes, is hex going to shoot the all time highs right away? Probably not, but is hex going to get back to doing its thing? I think so. Um, and all I, that would be behind like that. That's the yeah. center of the FUD, you know? Yeah. And this is like, yeah, the lack of pulse chain is the reason for this dip. Also, too, I don't think outrage marketing is helping the price at all. I know Richard Hart's getting a few followers here and there, but it's not helping the hex price. Look at the chart. I mean, Richard Hart, he posted that tweet. He's like, oh, look, I'm getting engagements. Like, he's getting like a million engagements on his post, like a million here and 100,000 clicks, but then 30 followers. He's like, oh, the followers is like way off. I'm like, no, it's a real stat. I think, you know, like you're, you're getting some followers, you're getting laid, but your coin's really taking a hit from all the shit you're doing. So, and that's one of the things I like. I'll always disagree with that, whether people like it or not, and whether people call me crazy. It's just like it is what it is. The price, the proof is in the pudding, right? So the yeah. results are right here, telling us exactly how the market feels about everything going on with Pulse Chain, the politics, maybe outrage marketing and stuff. I mean, it, it, and yeah. to his point as well, like we are in a bear market. Like pretty much every chart out there looks like hex. Hex is more magnified on a percentage basis, but back when we turn ourselves around i think it's gonna you know yeah outperform to you know the other way so it's just yeah i think yeah. the bigger the the bigger the pump the bigger the dip like hex couldn't go on that long without dipping eventually right and we had good structure at first for pulse chain not being a thing we still had some hopium right we we hit the structure around the 10 12 cent range and then we had the pump granted we did have a sacrifice phase but like we did create structure but then yeah obviously Hey, you can't expect Hex to just stay up and going without Pulse Chain. Like, people are pissed off. And I know a lot of people personally that don't like Richard Hart or Hex or anything because of everything that's been going on around Pulse. And people are only paying, not everybody, but there's a lot of people that are only paying attention to Richard Hart right now because they have their sacrifice funds locked, right? Of course, they sacrifice for freedom of speech. We know that. But people are only paying attention because they're waiting for him to launch. And like you said earlier, there's going to be a lot of people that will exit the moment that they have access to, you know, their coins and their funds or whatnot, whatever. Not their funds, but their coins, at least because of. Yeah. So and obviously Richard's going on that spree of like unfollowing and blocking people, which I don't think that helps adoption. But at the same time, like if you're going to piss people off that are going to sell their hex because of it, you might as well do it while we're down 97 percent and get them out of here now before they can actually harm the price, you know, at all time highs. So. But you're like you said, it's it's a it's a bear market, so things are down. And like I said, ninety seven percent dip is not sexy, but it's the uh, sentiment. Almost. It's where it's where we're at right now, and you know it, it's it's part of a market cycle. So everybody or a lot of people in this chat have been through the entire up phase that we can see there, and now we're you know in this you know over a year now of. I would call a very sexy long-term bull flag once this yeah, resumes yeah. back up. So, you know, I, I know it's all, it feels like we're getting close to peak FUD, peak anger, all that stuff. But also remember how good it feels when it swings back the other way. And when it swings back the other way, when pulse chain is announced, maybe not necessarily straight off of V3, um, but, you know, pulse chain becomes a reality uh, we're going to look back at these times and be like, oh, man, remember when we were at each other's throats or, you know, so and so said this or, yeah. you know, everybody was so pissed off. Um, you know, we're going to look back at that and and laugh one day, I think. Absolutely. And real quickly before I kind of have to wrap it up, but against Bitcoin, I think I, I posted this chart on Twitter last night, but 
if you're talking bull flag porn, like you said, right? Impulse correction, first bull flag. Impulse correction, second bull flag. Wave go. one, two, three, four. You're not going to get a four wave market. You're going to get a fifth wave eventually. So you know, you know, be patient, do your thing, and chill. But it did finally touch structure from the pre big payday dip that that all time high we had just under a penny. Um, structure finally got touched. Right. And let me delete this. Hang on one second. Where's my garbage can? Um, structure finally got touched from back here. If I extend that out and we had a huge pump, um, off of that, not huge, but that's a crooked line, but just to measure the amount of buy support that's just sitting there, 24% pump, not pump, but a 24% push up from touching that line in the form of a wick. Right. And that's real crooked, but, uh, it's not so accurate, but you, you get the point, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, like price is really shooting up instantly off bouncing off that line. Not to say that it's gonna never go that low again, but it's good to see that we're touching structure and we're finally getting some confirmations. So the hard part of the bear market, which is watching everything go down in volatile ways, past in my opinion, we'll still probably get more drops. But we're gonna go to the boring part, right? And I think Twitter is a good indication of the phases we're in. You know, they have that whole like market phase that everyone posts like the yeah. depression i think everyone's legitimately angry right now <laughs> <laughs> legit yeah um that anger is going to turn into a depression and people are going to get sad and once they get bored once that anger dies off in three months and the prices still aren't up and they might be even down they might turn into a sadness and a depression that people are just gonna be like i'm getting out of the internet i'm giving up i'm getting you know people wash themselves out of the market and then new clean energy will refill. So it's, it's all part of markets. And if it's your first bear market, like just, I guess, hang in there. It's not, it's not really much advice to give, but. I mean, you've made it this far. And, <laughs> yeah. you, know, you know, it's, uh, what's a few more months at this point? Exactly. But I'm going to have to head out. I'm actually, my haircut was supposed to be 9.15. I didn't even text my barber, but. Uh oh, all yeah. right, man. Well, thank That's you very up. much. Where can we find you, brother? Um, you can find me on Twitter. Um, I do have a YouTube page. I haven't really did many streams, but I'm going to start streaming again. Um, honestly, just, I don't know. You don't have to show my links. I'm Jenkins. If you just go on Twitter, you might find me Jenkins with the Z. Um, if you Cosmo want to Jenkins, me, right? Yeah. Cosmo Jenkins on Twitter. I'm just like, with a Z. Yeah. With the Z. If you want to, if you want to find me bad enough. Oh, there it is. And your handle yeah, right below your face there. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Cosmo yeah. Jenkins. So if you want to find me, you'll find me, but. Um, but yeah, so it was good streaming with you, though. I appreciate you having me on. It was it was good talking with you. And I haven't really had a, a passion to be streaming because I think when I do my technical analysis talking with myself, I kind of like feel like I'm repeating myself every stream. But it's good to talk with somebody else, you know, so. so yeah, I like it. Bounce ideas off of each other and, you know, what I'm seeing, what other people are seeing, what the chat's seeing. I know you're concentrating on the charts while you're talking about them. So, yeah, I, I like the flow of it. Um, you know, it was really fun. So. Thanks, man. I mean, what better time to do it at the end of a year? And, yeah. you know, candles are completing, months are completing. And, uh, yeah, off to 2023. And hopefully, uh, you know, got you a little excited with those last uh, few charts talking Pulse, Pulse X, <laughs> and Hex. I mean, we can't go down forever. And it, like I said, if you've made it this far, what's a few more months you know we get in you know past you know q1 and the q2 q3 um i think we could be looking at you know exciting times once again so thanks yeah. to everybody in chat thanks again jenkins for coming by and doing this we gotta do this again man it was so much fun absolutely just let me know on twitter i'm always i'll be glad i'll I'm, you're you're my, you're my priority guy for my next uh guest stream so i'll make sure i'll get on there next time you hit me up so anyway man i appreciate it thank you very much and thank you chat you guys are awesome the last stream of 2022 everybody have a wonderful new year and we will see you in the next cheers